Hi guys, this is Crivilli again with another product review and today we are going to have a look at the new Pelican M101N Special Edition and that Special Edition here is called Bright Red. Now the Pelican M101N is sort of a, it's a, in reminiscence of a vintage pen, uh, there was a 101, Pelican 101 back in the days, it's a 1930s pen design, I believe from 1937, and uh, this is like the fourth vintage re-release that Pelican has made. There was already a M101N Lizard, then there was a brown and a red tortoise, and uh, that one here is a re-release of uh, 101 that was back then, I think, called Coral Red. That one here now is called Bright Red and you can already see we have some sunshine out here today that this acrylic that this pen here is made from uh, is a really deep rich red resin that is you know sort of covered by a orangey yellow marbling that depending on in which angle or you hold the pen into the light sort of changes its appearance a little bit. Um, but before we cover the pen in detail let's have a look at the packaging and you can see I can almost not get it onto the camera because it is a special edition and it's a rather expensive pen but we talk about the price in a minute. The packaging is quite large and chunky. So if you take out that this is like the standard white cardboard gift sleeve, not standard, I mean like it's the special edition sort of standard, like all those special editions come in those, or many of them come in those large boxes here. Then you slide out another huge box with this vintage Pelican logo on it saying Günther Wagner, Hannover and Wien, which is in reminiscence of the beginnings of Pelican's company history. Um, all these vintage design elements around the box. Uh, then you have a little, a little fabric or satiny, satiny thing here that you can grab onto, pull out this large inner box. Now the nice thing about uh, that product here is that it comes with a large bottle of ink containing 62.5 milliliters of royal blue pelican 4001 ink uh, this is the standard uh, glass that the 4001 ink normally comes in with a pelican with one chick on top of it and then also <clears throat> a vintage ink glass label on it and then here a color coding for the for the royal blue put that aside as well and then yeah you have this you know this small leather sleeve that many pelican pens come in the m200s and uh, the m400s uh, and so on <clears throat> saying uh, pelican bright red uh, m101 uh, 101n and I got the one with a medium nib here. This is not my pen, by the way, this is a loner. And after the review, I will have to unfortunately send this nice pen back. And yeah, you know, the standard Pelican booklet. So that's that with the packaging. So let's have a look at the pen. As said, a deep red uh, a acrylic, according to the Pelican website or according to Pelican information, I've not I've used that pen for about two or three weeks now. That red parts, those red parts of the pen here, they're gonna sort of like stay polished through use, so that will always somehow retain its shiny red appearance here. And then, of course, we've already talked a little bit about this yellow orange marbling that sort of plays and swirls around the whole pen's body here, cap and barrel. That is. The accents that we have are 24 karat gold plated and the nib that I'm going to show you in a minute is a 14 karat gold nib. I have the medium here and the pen comes in sizes extra fine all the way up through broad which is sort of the standard nib sizes. On top of the cap we have a Pelican logo, looks like this old school 
Pelican logo that was on the 101 pens as well. It's a rather large top of the cap here. Looks as said exactly as the 101N design wise. You have Pelican, the Pelican uh, typo logo, the old Pelican typo logo here on top of the cap have a gold band running around here on the back it says Germany and then as opposed to and that uh, M400 tortoise will come into play again in a bit um, for some comparison size comparisons you see um, has a different clip it has not this uh, typical Pelican beacon that you normally see on other Pelican pens but it has sort of a teardrop pen but as this other standard pelican clip it also flares out here at the top which makes it very easy to pocket that pen and the pen is a really small pen and what is really nice about the size of that pen and i'll i'll show you also the size in hand then in a bit writing wise it's a very tiny pen uh, many fountain pens back in the days were kind of tiny uh it's really nice because you can really easily slide that pen into your shirt pocket and it will stick out here a little bit, but it, it, it won't sit all the way too deep in, in, in your shirt pocket, but sit in there really, really nicely. So it makes it a really, really nice everyday carry pen, uh, which, is, which is perfect, I think. Um, then as said here, the cap, then we have two gold center bands here. Uh, a set also 24 karat gold plated and then this is the piston turning knob here at the end that has some knurling going on here and then just a domed end. When we uncap the pen something really nice about Pelican pens that I like a lot they make really nice quick note takers because they actually let me do it like this uncap with about a bit less than three quarters of a turn half a turn to three quarters of a turn and you get the cap off. The cap here is like sort of semi-transparent. You see the gold center bands shining through. You see some of the marbling shining through. Really nice and also depending on how you hold that into the light you see the semi-translucency here which is really really nice design element and you really see this nice marbling and the bright red of this M101 N bright red. Put the cap aside, uh, we have a lovely gold nib here. That gold nib uh, also retains the appearance of the vintage Pelican nibs, saying Pelican in that old typo logo that you've also seen on the ink bottle. 585 for the gold content, 14 karat, and then medium for the width designation. If we compare that for a minute to the nib of a m400 you see that it's approximately or probably it's 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 the same nib base that pelican uses not exactly sure but like the center hole the breather hole has exactly the same position the nib shoulders have approximately the same width the whole nib appearance looks pretty much exactly the same it looks as if the tipping is slightly different but i'm not sure what's interesting about that pen is that it has quite some stub nib characteristics i don't know whether this is just my review sample that uh, is like that but i'm showing gonna show you that in a minute when we do the writing sample um and then down there you have the feet and also the feet technology the feet looks pretty much exactly the same on the M101N and on the M400, right? So, we have a fairly short section. Maybe I can compare that to the M400 as well. Many people will have an M200 or M400, so maybe uh, that is a nice reference to, to um, you know, interweave here every now and then. So people have sort of an, you have sort of an idea yeah, uh, about the uh, about the size of the pen or the properties of the pen. Um, that is pretty comfortable for me to hold that short section. Uh, as I said, I was surprised because the pen is a fairly short pen, as you can see here in my hands. Um, but it is very comfortable for me to hold, and it is very comfortable for me to write with, even unposted, which I have to say was really surprised about because when I saw that pen first. I was like, this is a really small pen. How am I ever gonna write with that? Because at times I have problems with the M400 unposted, but for some funny reason, I don't have problems with this pen unposted. And I can't really tell you why, but that's the way it is. But of course you can post the pen 
it does pen post securely. That is not going to come off. The pen gets fairly long, but since the cap is very lightweight, the pen does not get top heavy whatsoever. So for longer writing sessions, I prefer to write the pen posted because it just gives me a little bit more, you know, added size in the hand. It just feels a bit more right to me. And as said, not top heavy whatsoever, but yeah, again, I can write that pen unposted. Then you see a very nice feature, which is a very large, of course, the pen is a piston filler. I've already pointed out the piston turning knob here, the ink window here, which is ambery in color like orange, amber, brownish, something like that. And yeah, it's really nice to have such a large, large ink window because at times, like for example, with the Lamy 2000 or something like that, ink windows are so tiny that they're next to being unusable. But this ink window here is very usable because it actually really gonna show you how much ink you have left. So uh, maybe we can do a size comparison to a M400 first, and then we do a size comparison to a, my standard reference pen, uh, Lamy Safari slash All Star, so, to get an, so that you get an idea about the size of the pen. So when we have the pen capped, I think we can safely say that it's almost the size of an M400. The M400 is slightly longer, and it's longer by the factor of the finial up here. Once we unpost the pen, uh, uncap the pen, of course. Do it like this. Uh, don't roll away. It's also slightly shorter, and once posted, it should be about the same length, probably. No, now it gets slightly longer than the M400. So I think it's probably safe to say that the pen is around, roughly around the size of an M400 pen. So if you're comfortable with the M400, you should be comfortable with that pen as well. And now when we compare the pen to a Lamy, this is the Lamy Lux and Palladium here, you see what I meant when I said that this is a rather tiny pen, which makes it for a nice pocketable pen in your shirt pocket. The Lamy Lux is a rather large pen, but you definitely see here that the M101N is a smaller pen, right? Alrighty, so what more is left to do is a writing sample with that pen. And I'm going to now show you the nib is a really nice smooth nib. There are not, no problems with that nib as with most Pelican nibs, I've probably never experienced a problem with a, with a Pelican nib. Now let's see if the pen starts, oh, you see it starts writing straight away. However, I had it unkept for quite a while in the course of the review here. So um, very nice, smooth gold nib, gives you that slight amount of feedback that just lets you know that you're writing, but very, very smooth, rather glassy, buttery smooth writing experience than a feedbacky writing experience. Pelican M101N. Bright red. I have filled that pen with the Pelican 4001 ink that came with it. Um, it's, as most Pelican pens, a rather wet pen. And uh, yeah, I was surprised as said by the stub nib characteristics of the pen. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you here. The downstroke is slightly wider than the side stroke. I don't know what that is. Normally Pelica nibs, if I write with that M400 that I have here, um, that is filled with the new uh, Edelstein ink smoky quartz. That doesn't really have that kind of characteristic. That really is just a round tip or uh, yeah, round, round tipping. But um, that pen here clearly does expose some stub nib characteristics, if you ask me. So that's that with the writing sample. As said, extremely nice writer, writes really nicely. One last thing that we have to talk about is the price of the pen. And this is uh, yeah, where many people will probably be a bit hesitant or something like that, because that pen is, 
You may want to say really expensive. It is an expensive pen. It's certainly not an impulse buy. I mean, that is not a Lamy Safari, right? I mean, that pen costs in that special edition box and all the thing that it comes with around 450 to 475 euro, which is definitely quite a word for a pen. So I think this will not be everyone's pen. Most likely it's for vintage fans and like that's where uh, now the price also comes into play a little bit in that sense that if you want to get an original vintage pen you really need to look out for a quite well restored or um, a pen in a very nice mint condition and those pens normally also have really high street prices the M101 and the 101s so in that sense for that money you get a pen that looks vintage but is new right so that is one thing second thing is that those pens really normally if you look at the older releases the lizard the brown and the red tortoise they really retain their price quite well so normally if i've checked around on ebay a little bit and um, you know i mean you pay between 300 and 600 euro or something like that for those pens depends a little bit on on you know their condition and 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 all that but yeah, it seems that they retain the price a little bit. And then also um, it's the same size than uh, M400. It's also a 14K gold nib. So I think if you want to compare that pen to something, you might want to compare it to a M400. And then also the M400 is not exactly an inexpensive pen. Also the M400 costs around 300 to 310, 315 euro i mean that are now not street prices that are you know that the the recommended prices the prices that pelican recommends to sell the pens for of course sellers sometimes do different things so that pen here being a special edition limited edition costs around 150 euro more or about a third more than an m400 so well that doesn't make it all that expensive but it still makes so it i mean it still makes it an expensive pen but sort of puts the whole pen into perspective a little bit and it being a vintage re-release or something like that yeah you might want to think that the price might be somewhat uh, justifiable but yeah in the end i guess it still will remain a pretty expensive pen and you got to determine for yourself if that is worth the money for you. That was that with the review of the M101N Bright Red. Uh, as always, I hope the review was useful for you and I'm glad to see you at the next review. Bye bye.